Welcome to the MUFG Global Markets Podcast. I'm John Cook, and I'm joined today by Takahiro Sakito, Chief Japan Strategist for MUFG. It's Monday, October 24th, 2022. Welcome back to the podcast, Sakito-san. Good to be back. Yeah, good to have you. And there is tons to talk about. Um, you mm-hmm. recently put out a piece that went over the Japanese Securities Dealers Association data for September. And I thought was the data showed some really interesting stuff. Um, perhaps mm-hmm. you could just go right into it for our listeners. Okay. In September, the Japanese Securities Dealers Association, JSDA, flow later shows that the foreigners turned net seller of long-term JGBs by 3.8 trillion yen and a medium term JGBs by 346 billion yen as they challenged the upper bound of the BOJ's yield curve control policy, 0.25%. In contrast, Japanese investors bought a net 3.2 trillion yen of JGBs, which provided a good offset to foreigners selling. Amongst Japanese investors, big net buyers of JGBs included pension funds, trust banks, who accumulated net 2 trillion yen, city banks, who bought 1.5 trillion yen, and the lifers, who bought 1 trillion yen. Yeah, that's interesting. It's almost like the you know foreigners taking another run at yield curve control, really. Um, but Japan, mm-hmm. you know, re- Japanese investors really took the other side. I think you speculated that probably they're selling out of other you know Japanese investors selling out of other foreign bond markets, like you know the UK would be an an obvious guess there. Um, mm-hmm. But l- let's go into a little bit more detail. Um, you know, mm-hmm. we, you talked about what overall foreign investors and Japanese investors were doing. Let's let's go into the detail of which Japanese investors were doing what. Japanese pension funds that bought 825 billion yen of yen bonds and 274 billion yen overseas assets, but sold a net 402 billion yen of Japan stocks in September. The overseas assets included net buying by 98 billion yen of foreign stocks investment fund holdings and 175 billion yen of medium to long term foreign bonds. These flows show that pension funds reduce their weightings to stocks, both domestic and overseas, while expanding their weightings to JGBs and foreign bonds. Lifers were big net buyer of super long JGBs in September by 866 billion yen. Lifers and non-life insurance companies overall unloaded a net 1.1 trillion yen of overseas assets and 32 billion yen of Japan stocks. Lifers included uh, continued <clears throat> to unload foreign bonds in September as their preference for super long JGBs grew. Meanwhile, Japanese banks unloaded a net 1.1 trillion yen of medium to long term foreign bonds, but bought a net 1.8 trillion yen of yen bonds. Japanese banks turned net seller of foreign bonds once again and used these proceeds to buy more JGBs. City banks and regional banks bought 346 and a billion yen and 463 billion yen medium to long term JGBs respectively, but sold 196 billion yen and 306 billion yen super long JGBs respectively. Okay, so it looks like, you know, between, you know, pension funds, lifers, and Japanese banks. Everyone's buying JGBs. A um, little mm-hmm. bit different with the other asset categories. You know, lifers, as you mentioned, are heavy sellers of overseas assets. Um, mm-hmm. You know, banks, heavy sellers of of, uh, of foreign bonds in particular, and pension funds. You know, a little little bit more mixed here. But again, you make the point that they're reducing their holdings to stocks. Uh, you know, basically reducing their holding equities and 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 increasing it to um, you know to to uh, to fixed income securities. Right. Um, so, 
Yeah, so I think that's a pretty comprehensive view of what Japanese investors were up to in September and the the mm-hmm. overall um, overall uh, trend of of uh, you know Japanese investors moving out of foreign markets and into domestic markets. Um, you know, this week brings the October Bank of Japan Policy Board meeting. Um, key meeting in in my mind i'm sure yours and our mm-hmm. listeners as well you have the yen you know threatening to ba- break through uh break through 150 and who knows where it goes after that um you have the mm-hmm. bank you know spending a lot of ammunition defending mm-hmm. y- its yield curve control policy so mm-hmm. i mean highly anticipated meeting what are they going to do okay the bank of japan the boj will hold this month's monetary policy board meeting at End of this week, October 27th to 28th, we expect the BOJ to firstly review economic conditions based on the September Tankan survey and October Sakura re- report on regional economies. Secondly, take time to do a checkup of the impact of global financial markets and financial system from the recent rise in G10 interest rates. And a third, consider policy options that align with the government's fiscal year 22 second supplementary budget to be released around the end of this month, and inflation countermeasures. In our view, the BUJ clearly shows at the September meeting that it will end COVID countermeasure operations in stages and will maintain current monetary policy at the October meeting as it reviews economic conditions focusing on inflation and the changes in production and logistics. However, popularity for the Fumio Kishida administration has been weakening because of inflation and more criticism is being leveled at BOJ Governor Haruhiko Kuroda. This could drive the BOJ to change policy in line with government inflation measures and a second supplementary budget. Nevertheless, recent public comments by Governor Kuroda and other Monetary Policy Board members have not pointed to any change in policy stance. So we think that any change to yield curve control operations are not a policy option. Wow. So, uh, you know, again, no big change to monetary policy, specifically yield curve control, despite right. many signs of stress mm-hmm. and market dysfunction. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I, I it seems a little weird on the face of it, but I would argue that recent, you know, experience in the UK suggests both the government and the BOJ proceeds with caution, right? Right. Um, okay, well, let's uh, let's kind of wrap things up, um, and and perhaps we can hit on a couple of the topics that you've that you've hit on already. But really, would like to leave our listeners with your outlook across yen rate, spot dollar yen, and yen basis markets. The new UK Chancellor of the uh, Exchequer, uh, Jeremy Hunt's decision to resign the proposed tax cuts has helped the British pound rebound. In contrast. The yen has continued its recent decline as other G10 central banks battle inflation. Meanwhile, the investors have been on watch for FX intervention, which has so far limited dollar yen rise beyond 150. Speculation of a supplies move by the Bank of Japan at its October Monetary Policy Board meeting has grown. We still see a bullish bias for dollar yen with trading between 148 to 151. Yen swap date curve is, uh, curve is under upward pressure. Over the near term, only a 15.5 year to 39 year liquidity supply JGB auction on October 25th is planned out of a two year JGB auction October 27th. The BOJ will likely continue to hold daily fixed rate JGB buying operations to support its yield curve control policy. Separately, lifers will soon be releasing their uh, second half of fiscal year 22 asset management plans. We expect the plans to show a return to super long JGBs 
after they finish unloading foreign bonds. Overseas investors will also show a stronger preference for JGBs as they are somewhat insulated from the sell off in other G10 bond markets. We expect yen rates to maintain a neutral bias. Yen basis has reversed and started to tighten as risk averse as eased. Minnesota Finance Weekly data for October 9th to 15th shows that Japanese investors were net buyer of overseas securities during that period by 938 billion yen. This included net buying of foreign stocks and investment fund holdings by 419 billion yen, medium to long-term uh, foreign bonds by 389 billion yen, and short-term foreign bonds by 128 billion yen. Japanese investors have suffered losses on their G10 bond positions, but have started to rebuild those positions. Investors abundant funds following the September JGB redemptions have been a cushion for stresses caused by price action in a UK bond market. Over the same week, foreign investors net bought 152 billion yen of Japanese securities, including 408 billion yen of Japanese stocks and investment fund holdings, while selling 182 billion yen of medium to long term yen bonds and by 72 billion yen of short term yen bonds. Both Japanese and foreign investors have been hit by the stresses of rising G10 rates causing bond selling. Over the near term, Japanese investors will focus on funding their dollar assets over the year end and continue investing in alternative assets. Overseas investors will probably continue to rebuild their JGB holdings, but steadily. We think yen basis will return to neural bias from wild events. Okay, all right, so bullish on dollar yen, um, and that comes in despite the Ministry of Finance active support of the yen here. Uh, mm -hmm. Neutral on JPY rate, um, as and that makes sense as you expect the BOJ to maintain current monetary policy. Mm -hmm. um, although you do point out that the sell-off in super longs may provide an attractive investment opportunity for Japanese life insurance companies, obviously makes a lot of sense, and neutral on cross-currency basis. Does that okay. sound about right? Yeah, good. And also, the, I will publish some more of uh, the reports about uh, uh, the Japanese lifers uh, second half now uh, asset management plan this uh, this week. Perfect. And I think that sounds like great fodder for another podcast episode. So, uh, listeners, mm -hmm. look out for that. And uh, you know, great stuff as always, Sakito. Thanks for coming on the podcast. Thanks for having me, John. And thank you for listening to the MUFG Global Markets Podcast rate, review, and subscribe on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. And reach out to your MUFG sales rep for any further information. Check back soon for more insights from the Global Markets Research Team.